If you go fast forward at least 10 years, I saw another woman uh, from, from our state of Kentucky, and uh, it turned out her maiden name was the same as this man's last name. And uh, her place of birth was the same place where this man resided. That's, that's how the initial contact was made with this family. Deborah Taylor came to our ALS research team. Uh, I became aware of her interest in genealogy and ultimately through Ancestry.com and other web pages. I asked her if she would be willing to help organize this family information. We now understand the family back to the mid-1800s. The information's organized in a very detailed pedigree that we call the scroll, and it's uh, probably now over 200 pages laid end to end. When we go on these blood and barbecue trips, you know, the product, what we, what we are after are samples of blood for DNA uh, skin biopsy because uh, colleagues here at UK can grow them in, in dishes and do them for experiments and of course then the essential pieces of information of how an individual donor fits into the large pedigree into, into our scroll. Our family is gathered here today because ALS has run in this bloodline. I'm actually adopted so I'm not even uh, blood related to Paula but you know, we're all here to do what we need to do. Dr. K has asked family members to give blood samples and biopsies for his research. And as a member of the family, he, I was asked to give a biopsy and blood, and I was happy to do so. They, they drew my blood, and they took a, a skin sample. It's a private thing, but they, you know, and, but also my grandkids are here, and I wanted to show them that you don't have to be afraid to help. Now you, you're qualified to do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is this family getting together is is absolutely awesome. It's it's amazing, and I've never seen a, a family support somebody so much. The the next question that's before us is why some people with this gene seem to develop ALS at a young age, and some seem to be spared even to advanced old age, like 90s. We have examples in our very large pedigree where some people seem not to get ALS, even though they have the mutation. So that's the, that's the research question in front of us. Today's goal is to um, bring the family together so if they're willing to give those samples that they'll participate and give the samples. They're hoping the same thing I am. They're looking at the future and children and grandchildren and hoping for a breakthrough.